The biggest challenge here has been its reputation. The, uh, the changes that the leadership team have brought here have been you know, sensible, they've been uh, creative, they've been inventive, they've tapped into the potential, the enormous potential that this wonderfully diverse school uh, has. And um, for a while, City Academy was this really well-kept secret because people made assumptions that there must be inherent weakness in that school. Um, why would I choose it for my child? Um, and there was a bit of, I suppose, counteraction against the school and people would be sceptical. Um, so the biggest challenge has been, one, that the reputation has been weak and that lots of people have wanted to work to solve that challenge. City Academy is a school really focused in its community. We've got about 760 students on roll. Um, it's an improving school, it's a growing school, so there's about 40 to 50 different languages spoken in the school. Students of many faiths, many religions, many nationalities. We're a really good school. We're now fifth in Bristol for progress. We've got a fantastic maths department, probably one of the best in the country. And we've got staff who really care about the kids and want them to do well, whatever their backgrounds and wherever they come from. We get lots of students coming into the school who are new to the country, so we're continually having to think about how we work with their needs, which makes it really interesting and really exciting. It's just a place where you go and learn and like you make friendships not just with the people in the school with the teachers as well. It's about the like connection you can you have with them so like I'm close with a few teachers so I like that knowing that I can come to school and like bond with them I guess. School means like just an area where you like you would want to learn. I try to do well in school and I try to enjoy it as well uh, while it lasts. Mostly because of obviously us being year in, like year 11 it's very stressful, a lot of pressure kind of thing. Like when you're in year 7 you think oh it's so far away and it just comes so fast like you don't even know. It's kind of a drop off as well because like you leave school after that pretty much. Yeah. So it just goes. Yeah year 11 is scary. Year 11 doesn't feel that much different to me because, well, it's only just, it's just been so quick. The way I feel about Year 11 is it's almost exactly the same, except I'm older and just people expect more from me. Like, GCSEs are coming up soon. I'm feeling scared about my mocks um, and, like, I'm just worried about how they're going to go. Um, yeah, I'm feeling scared about my mocks. The exam went all right. It wasn't as scary as I thought it was going to be. But it, it was way easier than I expected yeah. it to be as well, yeah. I hope so. I hope I did all right. <laughs> um, our first mock exam, I, I personally think I went very well. I was kind of struggling with time on question four, but I had to just bypass it to get to the last question because that's one of the more marks. So I think I've done well, <laughs> hopefully. In my mock exams, I uh, I didn't, I wouldn't say it was like necessarily stressful, like it was extremely long <laughs> and I feel like for a test of knowledge, it doesn't necessarily need to be that like that <laughs> amount of time, but apart from that, when it comes to the actual exam, I feel like I did pretty well. <laughs> I want to at least get like above fives in my subjects. So that's English, math, science, my options by the end of the year. <laughs> if I get past the marks and I get all that, I'm like, all right, cool. I'm just do what I do, it's going well. If I keep up like that, then I guess I'll get like a seven, hopefully, and seven, six. By the end of the year, I hope to achieve uh, greatness. Um, by greatness, I mean what I need to achieve a good job or the job I want in life. If I exceed everyone's expectations and most importantly my own expectations, then I can achieve greatness. I, I have um, ideas of either being a musician or an actor. I'm kind of moving towards acting at the moment, but 
I mean, I, I like both and I haven't settled on one, but I'm closer to one than the other. So. Well, I want to be a big musician. So like everyone knows me, like I walk into the club, everyone knows me. <laughs> like, yo, Stray. I'm like, yo, yeah, it's me. <laughs> So I've always thought of City Academy as being quite possibly the key school in the city. It's a, a melting pot, uh, it's at the heart of the town, uh, and there have been times in the past where a school on this site has done well, and there have been times when a school on this site has done badly, has done less well, uh, and it has an influence on the community and it has an impact on the town. Um, so a healthy City Academy is good for Bristol, I think. I think City Academy's got one of the best communities. I'm a bit biased, this was my old previous school at St George, but even I have seen the change. It's always been that community forefront in the area for someone that actually lived in the area, because my family still live in the area now. Um, and I've had family that's come, my uncles, aunties have all come to City Academy. So it is that community from start to finish. We are very tight and we are united. You know, we have our problems at other schools, but I feel like the community within our school is one that it's unexplainable, it is brilliant, and I think it is one of the best schools to work in. So, um, what I've enjoyed most about being here um, over the years is like the relationships that I've formed with my teachers, like um, how much they care for me, how much like I know they want me to do well, and it's like they're easy to talk to, they're approachable. It's just nice to have teachers that actually care about their job. There is a community at City Academy. Um, it's everyone talks to everyone really. There's lots of groups of people. It's just a microcosm of life really. You're just looking at, okay, there pe those people hanging out with those people, those people hanging out with those people. But there is a lot of integration throughout the school because actually people live in the local area and they just see each other all the time. And a lot of time they don't just go straight home. They go somewhere else and then they go somewhere else. And actually they've got that support network of their friends more so than anything at home sometimes. So the school becomes like, de facto family really and it has to be we have to um, support them as teachers we have to support them as pseudo parents and their peers have to support them as pseudo siblings really. I just think it's a nice place to be and yeah I don't really know how to explain the feeling I just can't bring it to words but there is a feeling. Well City Academy as a community is very very diverse but um, ranging from you know students that have lived in the local area for the whole of their life and students that literally arrive at the weekend and they're in school by Wednesday. And you know, we get some students here that have had little to no schooling. We get students here that have excelled at primary school. Um, and that mix just makes for such um, an interesting set of students. It really challenges the teachers as to, in terms of making sure that you've, you get the learning right, you get the teaching right, um, you get the challenge right. It's really, really successful and when you see that child who has been really nervous for a week and then all of a sudden they find something that they're really good at and they excel or they find a good friend in the class that you're teaching, everyone supports each other. In there is where we have our food and in there is where we do like assemblies and stuff like that. Lana is just our dancer, our choreographer, um, amazingly talented. It's just amazing how she balances it all. In our school we generally have like one big corridor. It just takes you through the whole of the school. She will start a question and then say, I can't do this! And then will immediately then go, oh wait a minute. And then she kind of realizes she can do it. Liana, my friend, is very hardworking, inspiring, and you know, she's um, been a good friend to me, helped me through a lot of things. Uh, she's just a very positive person, and she just um, lights the whole uh, room up whenever she walks in, you know? Oh, thanks. We just became really good friends really quickly. I think because we're quite similar, 
um, both creative people and um, quite funny. Obviously, I'm more funny, but you know, um, she's still quite funny. Uh, but yeah. She's just a natural leader. Liana's a special young lady. She is so talented. She's just absolute credit um, to everyone who ever knows her. And the highest thing that I could probably say about Liana, I've got two little girls. If they turn out like Liana, then I will be more than happy. I mean, the main challenge in year 11, of course, is their GCSEs. Um, but the, the, the other difficulty is, of course, is they are also trying to not only do GCSEs, but then also choose where, what are they going to do after their GCSEs, so in the September of year 12. And of course, it, it's really difficult when you're 15 to decide what am I going to do when I'm 25? Because really, that's the journey you're kind of looking at. They're also doing that great thing of hitting puberty and growing up as teenagers. So what a great time to do your most stressful set of exams is actually when your hormones are raging through your body. So I know I definitely want to do something within like the performing sector, but I changed my mind quite a lot. I Me, mean, I just want to work. I want to... Um... Okay, I, I really want to go like really big in the music industry. like. The top level. Work in media, like I want to do media. So I just want to do whatever it takes to get up to doing that. Um, yeah, so I actually have a plan of what I want to do in my future. Unlike a lot of kids in my year, I think who feel a lot of pressure about it. Um, I actually want to become a solicitor. So after I leave school, I'm probably going to go to game development. And as I'm doing it as a hobby now. What I want to end up doing is being an actor. From what I've been told, getting to know a lot of people is the best way to get big in the music industry. So that's what I'm trying to do. So Dre Coles um, has had to follow in the footsteps of an older brother um, and, and has filled those boots really, really well. Dre has worked exceptionally hard. I should have a great day at Results Day. He did a maths paper yesterday and he said, there wasn't anything that I didn't know there. I think I'm going to get a nine on that paper. I was like, Yes, Dre. Uh, Dre is, from how I know, he's very dependable and he's very kind-hearted. You people would have your back pretty much anywhere. And like, he's, good. he's a good person to have around in almost any situation. I don't think that's something he can't actually do. He's a phenomenal young man. He is, again, super talented. He probably, what you would say, would be classed as a model student because he is so driven, but he's got a cheeky side to him. He's so inspiring. He's not afraid to stand up in free court and actually give his opinion, which is such a, a skill that probably people his age and much older don't have and don't have the confidence that he has to do that. I think this year I'm focusing more. So I kind of get easily distracted and um, I feel like this year it really matters what I do. So I'm trying to focus and just push myself. Yeah. As we've carried on through the weeks and we just came out of our mock exams, I think it's actually hit some of us that this is our final year, that we're not going to see anyone after this. We actually have our real exams in a couple of months, so we have to take it seriously. I think year 11 is different from the other years and more difficult because it's kind of like you're in year 10 and okay they're talking about your GCSEs and they're like oh you, you need to worry about this eventually you know you, you'll get to that and you get into year 11 and it's just the first day it starts it's like GCSEs college what are you going to do with your job what are you can do with your whole life you know and it's just constant every day from then on and when you got to year 11 you just being constantly pressed on doing and doing your best even though you can't sometimes yeah, it's, it is funny in Year 11 because they do start in September and they, you know, it's always really positive, the return to work in September. The students, that you know, they're a bit fed up of the summer holidays by then. The time scale from September to May, June, it still seems enormous. Um, so I think they come in, they feel a little bit of pressure. Yeah, I'll do that, but I can do that next week, it'll be okay. But as the weeks go by, as the weeks go by, they, they, get, they get to know that that's not the case and that if they don't do it now, it's not going to happen. In general, Year 11, as, as most people will know, is the most stressful time, I would say, obviously with the build-up to GCSEs. It's a really interesting year because you always start the year of Year 11 talking about this is their final year, you need to focus, 
and it almost feels like it flies by till Christmas. Uh, and then, then suddenly the students start to realise it's only a couple of months because you tell them, you tell them you've got this is your final year, and it it feels like a long time, but actually it goes so quickly. The sheer amount of exams that they have to do is huge, absolutely huge. This is the next six weeks are going to be the hardest of their lives so far for quite a lot of the students, I think. The, the, the man with the deepest voice in the school and he's such a talented musician and actor um, and such a nice guy as well. It's been great to see him and the others um, develop as performers over the year and be in the band. That's been brilliant. Yeah, a real pleasure. Hard working, focused, driven and a very bright boy. Wanting to achieve and seems to have real goals about what he wants to do. We have the hospitality suite. It's absolutely where all of the school's funding went into. It has like a really nice carpet, really nice chairs. Great musician. Um, he's been involved in a lot of Battle of the Band concerts within the music department. He's one of those key people that if there's a drama thing going on or anything, music, he is in there and he's not afraid. Probably like one of my closest friends, like ever. Um, he, like, when I first met him, he was like, he had pretty much all the interest, interests I had. A group, a group of people with yeah. common interests, yeah, common music genres. Music, yeah. yeah, exactly. He's actually quite a quiet young man, but behind the scenes he is going a million miles an hour. He is working flat out. I would happily put him forward for representing the school in anything. Daniel is absolutely obsessed with getting a grade 9 in English, which I love as his English teacher. Um, and I think he'll go on to, again to be really, really successful. Very successful in whatever it is that he chooses to do. I think you make really great friends here because you know there's a lot of diversity, there's loads of different people so it's a great kind of way to make good friends because you meet like all different kinds of people. So the school's got lots of different cultures within it. Um, that brings with it challenges, however it brings a real like eye-opener for the children. This is the UK now, this is what we're looking at, this is society. To you, People don't just stay in their own communities, people have to integrate. What I find a lot of the time is people who've just come to the country really want to succeed and that actually helps to um, move kids forward and push them um, in the right direction. We get to see every culture, we get to know every culture and I think this is a school where you might not have met say a Muslim person before or someone from Romania or Bulgaria. It's amazing and again it's, it's such a unique place where it's so special and even though 80% of our cohort maybe identify as Muslim, that can be black Muslim, Afghan Muslim, it could be so diverse, it's just a very special place to be really. Um, I think it benefits the students because obviously Britain is multicultural so they're able to deal with lots and lots of different people. They're not going to think negatively of people from cultures other than the ones that they're from. So many different cultures, so many different languages and they're all at the same place at the same time. It's very interesting to see, it's very it's nice to see as well. I enjoy it. A benefit of having a multicultural school is it dispels quite a lot of myths based on any sort of knowledge, just based on ignorance. And I think in this school like this, it really does put them to bed, I suppose. It makes it very obvious that they're wrong. Yeah. Even mid-year, you know, someone arrives at the school and they have uh, a different background and they speak a different language. And the, uh, I suppose the beauty of the school is that it opens its doors and opens its arms to that kind of change and diversity. And the children value it. And it's interesting to, you know, to note, I suppose, that children who've been to schools that don't have that level of diversity, by the time they get to year 11, can start to realise, well, you know, everyone around here is a bit like me. Uh, and the people at that school have had a richer experience for that. And the school has done a good job at managing the notion of inclusivity uh, because the community is in a, a state of change, in a state of growth and flux. And of course, with the with the success of City Academy this year, we would expect the, the volume of children to go up, but that diversity will remain. So we're just walking past the reception, which is like the, the main core of the school pretty much. Damien needs to stop growing. 
The boy is so tall. I love it. Incredibly tall. Um, just one of those lads where you think, why are you, we just stop growing? Because even I at six foot have got to look up at you, which is, which is superb. Uh, Damien, how could you miss Damien? All seven foot five of him. Being significantly taller than every other child in his year group. I've seen him in the corridors and not really taken much notice apart from thinking, oh, you're quite tall. So Damien is our, is our computer man um, and he's off to do loads of stuff with computing next year. Someone who's really found what they're going to do in life um, through some of the opportunities that we put in front of him. Uh, Damien is dependable, you can ask a lot of him and um, he always helps you out when you need help. Oh, I'll be fine, sir. I'll be fine. Are you sure, Damien? Do you not know think maybe you should do some revision or some work? I'll be fine, sir. Nice kid. Nice banter as well, to be fair. Yeah, good guy. Because he's so conscientious and because he works so hard, you can set a task up, you can ask him to do something and he will do it. And you almost don't need to worry about him. He's EAL student, um, so English wasn't his first language when he came, um, but he's, he's gone on, you wouldn't even notice it now. I know he's got a lot of friends who really respect him here. And even being from another country, again, the way our school's so inclusive, he's just come in, he's got on, he's got a lovely cohort, he just mixes with everybody, always got a little smile on his face. He is such a lovely, lovely young man. We have a Christmas party, um, we eat food, and we enjoy it. As the years go on, I probably start to feel less and less festive. I think there's more like an up spirit. In music as well, I think it's like everyone's just more upbeat than they were in September. It's my favourite holiday, I'm honestly so excited. Like, I've got all my presents done, and I'm going to spend, because we have a half day, so I'm spending the rest of that day just wrapping presents. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited, it's so good. I think year 11 is going great so far. I feel like my mocks went pretty well. I didn't do badly in any lesson, but I personally felt like I could have done much better in some lessons. Even if I was extremely prepared and I was on track to get the best possible grades for GCSEs, I still feel like it would still be stressful. Just mocks. They, they annoy me, like you come in straight away, you're in and you're doing a test. It's, my favourite subject, my favourite subject in school is music. I got the highest grade in it, so that's all cool. I think I'm doing very well in that. As it came on to mock times, it became really hard. But I think now, after we've like we've done all the mocks, I think we're really like we've realised that it's actually serious now. Like we have to settle down and actually revise. From now on, I've got it on lock, and um, it's going so it's going quite well. You know, all the other years you're like, oh, this is so hard to get to your 11, and it's like, oh, <laughs> this is what it was all leading up to. I mean, my studies have improved a lot. Again, like, I think, I guess that's a positive side effect of getting serious is, you know, I'm actually realizing the potential that I have, and I'm seeing everyone around me kind of get more serious and realize their potentials. The teachers, I think, they're constantly helping you and pushing you, and like, even like the din leggers give you a positive word now and then, you're like, you know, year 11's hard, but you get through it, you know, everything like that, like, all their staff are just so amazing. I came here, like, just before five months, six months, uh, so coming from another country here, like, it felt amazing, everyone just helped me and everyone was just so positive and they boosted me up to like achieve what I wanted to do in life and it was just amazing, everyone was so great with me and I feel good here. So Sammy is uh, another younger sibling following the footsteps of a, uh, another very talented older sibling and she has done incredibly well and, and she's grown you know, and has learned and is finding her place in the world. Sammy's so articulate, she's so bright. She, that girl in year nine could have picked any job that she wanted to do. Her maths is brilliant, her science is brilliant, her English is brilliant, she can articulate herself well. She's fantastic. She knows what she wants, and I don't think she's afraid to go after and get it. And that is what makes Sammy. She's one of my favourites. I taught her in year seven, I've taught her older sister. I imagine I'll teach her younger sister when she comes as well. Uh, yeah, very intelligent. Very, very, very intelligent. We knew that Sammy was a force to be reckoned with um, in far of in far as challenge her, challenging her academically. She is such an individual. She's found her own way. She's found her own path. Her hair changes colour all the time, um, but that again is something that she embraces. Sammy actually reminds me of me as a child. 
I think. Like I see with her in English and she just made me, made me like English. I, I didn't like English because like it felt too hard for me coming from Greece and I was sitting with her and like she made me like English. Oh, I didn't know this about myself. This is great. This is weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's so nice. School for me, I think, has been an experience. Definitely. I think it's been a roller coaster. Like it's been stressful, but it's also kind of the forming years of your life. So you can't really complain about it. <laughs> I think definitely year 11 <laughs> has been kind of the most memorable year because so much has happened. I think I'll miss how personal, like personal everything is here because they, the teachers are very good at like forming relationships with the students. I think the students are good at forming relationships with the students and everything is on a very personal level. I, I would really, really miss just the people and my, my group as well because we're all going our separate ways and I, I would just miss Ev everything. A lot of the lessons as well. Um, music, <laughs> just the whole department. Yeah, I'm gonna miss. A, I'm gonna miss a lot, of, a lot of people, <laughs> just in my year as well. For me, school's been like a journey. So I've gone from like not knowing anyone, starting in year seven, and then like growing up with all these people and learning like all I know now from school. So I'm gonna miss having a good a good connection with like my teachers here and I've gotten used to my surroundings so I'm gonna miss seeing everyone every day like it's just a fun place to be I'm gonna miss school my lasting memory of the school will be um the first ever band performance I did with my friends it wasn't it wasn't like completely perfect but the fact that it was a little bit scrappy it was just like it's made it really enjoyable and something I won't forget so yeah I'll, I'll miss a lot of things but it's gonna just gonna be a recurring theme but I'll probably really miss the music department because it's where I spent a lot of my time, like a lot of my breaks, lunches after school. To, to be fair, if I didn't go to school, I wouldn't be the place I am now. I've been, I've been from twos and threes, went to what, six and sevens now. So, you know, that, that was a massive improvement with that. I'm just surprised how quick, how quick the time can go. My most memorable experiences are the teachers, um, my friends, it's been hard but fun so there's been times where I feel like I can't do it but then once I've done it it's just been quite enjoyable. It's very scary to think the people you spent the last five years with you ain't gonna see them anymore. You have some dance rooms here. So Celicia is a real character, um, really really dedicated to trying to do the best for herself. Quite a caring person, um, got a heads up about other people, but such a character, such a character. To be fair to her, put in a huge amount of effort in the past six months, I would say. Um, she's really started to show her drive and her enthusiasm to achieve, which is what you need at this stage. So right here is the Haven. This is where like all the pastoral team works. So. The work we've done with her, she has literally turned it around and I am super, super proud of that young lady. She has worked incredibly hard, especially in year 11. I like Celicia, got a lot of time for her. She's got great taste in music, an all around nice girl. She's great because she takes her education really, really seriously. She takes her friendships really seriously. She wants to achieve, and which is brilliant, and we've worked really hard with her to ensure that she doesn't put too much on herself. She is hilarious, is the best way to describe her. She will give her opinion. She doesn't care if you agree with it or you don't agree with it, but that's what Celicia is. All right, about the exams coming up, I'm feeling a bit I'm I'm a bit worried. I won't lie, I'm a bit worried because they're obviously big exams and they're really important. Um, but oh, no matter no matter how much I worry about them or feel about them, they're still going to happen. And like I can't stop time and gain more knowledge. I just have to make do with the time I have now. Actually, I would love for all of you guys to pick up your envelopes, and I know you will in August with massive smiles on your faces. You can do this. You are incredible people. Please remember that. 
we all recognise and remember the stress of going into your, into your exams. People have been telling you for a number of years, but specifically since the beginning of year 10, this is the most important thing you'll ever do. And of course, to some degree, that's true. It's become even more stressful for children getting to 16 and doing their GCSEs. You know, going into an exam period where you're taking probably around 25 different papers that come at a rate of knots. You know, there is a, a, a big pressure on, on mental health for young people taking their GCSEs. A lot of the school's work is also about helping children to manage that stress. But of course, also schools want children to do really well. Yeah, of course, performance, that's how we're measured. But, uh, you know, I defy you to find people at City Academy that aren't absolutely about the children. You know, celebrate their outcomes because of what it means for them and their life chances. The connection between the tangible moral purpose of the staff at City Academy and their ambitions for their pupils is ubiquitous. Um, you know, every member of staff you meet, you know, they carry that. And the passion for the school, for the environment, for these kids, uh, I think is, uh, well, it's stirring. You know, I just want to wish you all the best. You can make it wherever you go in this world and don't let anybody tell you you can. All right? It's not about where you start, it's about where you finish. And you finish this year and your journey is going to be amazing. So, all the best. Results day is one of those days in the year where everyone's been on tender hooks. You know, it's a bit exciting, we're nervous. This is one of the best days of the year, and this is when you know that what you do is actually rewarding, you know, and you've been a part of their journey. I feel really proud today. It's the kids coming in and getting their results, which is the five-year journey for them. But it's, it's just celebrating that hard work, and we always get those staff in, and they are really pleased to see the kids and do those some results. So, no, we're really, we're really, really pleased, and it's, as a school, it's, we've got our Ofsted good which is really important. It's been another good year. It's, it's, it's another step on the journey for these students and for the school, so they're really, really pleased overall, yeah. I'm amazed, like I heard so many things about the grade boundaries and everything, but End of the day, I tried my hardest, so I'm okay with the results I got. Overwhelmed. I'm like on the edge of tears. It's. Whew, I'm good. I'm so pleased with this. Uh, I'm just proud of myself that I got through it, you know what I mean? Like, and to get these as well, it's just like a cherry on top. I'm really proud of myself, like it's weird because at the start of year 11 I didn't think I was going to get through it um, and I got a 9 in RE, a 7 in English Literature, a 5 in Maths, I've just done really well and I'm proud of myself. So I doubted myself like a lot but the teachers made sure that they were like you're going to do this and I believe in you and that really, I think that really played a part. <laughs> 